What is going on everybody? It is Dylan with Azure DFS and in today's video I'm going over how to play tournaments. So uh, if you guys missed it I had a showdown video of how to kind of play and enter those contests. Um, on today's one we're focusing on tournaments. So what are tournaments? All right. So if you're at the DraftKings screen and it's going to block it here for some reason that keeps happening on desktop. Um, let me get back to it. Hopefully it doesn't pop up. Cool. So if you look on this screen, you'll find all the contests, right? You're, you're going in the tournament play, uh, which excludes the head to head double ups and multiplayer, uh, multipliers. Uh, and this is like, you could still have single entry contests. Don't get me wrong. Um, but this is when you're playing the field and you know, your, your profit is almost unlimited. It's limited, but not so. Uh, when you play double ups and head to heads, you can basically just double your money. Multipliers, whatever you're multiplying, like that. But you know, the Millie Maker, you can win um, on this, like eight dollars, or you can win a million. So um, that's kind of the difference. So uh, how how do you play them, right? So obviously, not everyone is going to have a lot of money, uh, including myself. Like I, I don't feel confident of putting, um, you know, thousands of dollars on DraftKings every week. Uh, every weekend stuff like that um, but what I am gonna show you guys really quick if you guys want to get started in max entering contests right uh, you subscribe to an optimizer you find an optimizer that's free right and you enter all your players so what I recommend doing uh, is going on FanDuel right so usually we're always DraftKings I'm just gonna use this quick example if anyone wants FanDuel content I could do that as well uh, but FanDuel has a really good, I recommend this, if you guys are interested in trying 150 lineups, optimizing, you know, don't manually enter 150 lineups, it's it's chaos. I've done it, uh, I've done 20 before of manually entering, it's chaos at 20, 150, I couldn't imagine. So, it's a 5 cent entry, right, and you can do it 150 times and it's $7.50. So, it's a good practice, right, this isn't limited to anybody, and you know, best case scenario, fifteen hundred dollars, right? Uh, Seven dollars fifty cents. Like you get top ten, you triple your money on on that one alone, right? And then you could still get into, you know, all of these prizes as well. So it's not like you're just doing it just to lose money. Like it's very easy to gain money, but it's a good good way to practice tournament plays. Uh, unfortunately, DraftKings doesn't have anything like this. Um, the $10 one, I think, is just 20 entry. Um, yeah, just a 20 entry. And I don't think they have anything else like it. The 25 I think, yeah, the same thing. So that's limiting you to 20. Um, and like, if you only want to do 20, that's fine. But like I said, if you want to practice 150, you want to see where your skill is at, where your, your player pool is at, I recommend just using FanDuel, uh, every weekend. Granted, the prices are going to be different. Like I understand that. Uh, and you, you're not going to play all the players you want, but it, it's a good practice, like $7 and 50 cents for someone that wants to get really invested into doing DFS, especially NFL, uh, it's a really good way to start. So recommend going to FanDuel just to try it out. But if you guys just want the full experience and you're in our on DraftKings, right? Uh, gonna go back to it. So now that we're here and we're entering lineups, right? So when we went over the double ups in 50 fifties and stuff like that of contest to enter, like we're going over save plays, right? Like we're going over, um, uh, Trevor Lawrence against the Colts. Um, uh, Russell Wilson against Vegas, right? Uh, Lamar against Houston, let's say. What we want to be targeting is is quarterbacks like... Let's go down here and find a really good defense, right? So, Pittsburgh. So, let's find Kenny Pickett. I think we might have passed him. Maybe not. Um, do they have Kenny Pickett this low? Let's just go on here and make it simpler. Um... Can I pick it 5,200, right, against San Fran? So if you're playing a 50-50 or double up, it's this is not what you want to target at all, right? And the reason being, it's a tough matchup. Their offense is not all that great. He's going into year two, right? But this is the type of plays that win you the millimaker. 
and not essentially like Kenny Pickett against one of the more tough defenses, but a guy that shouldn't have a good game, uh, but has the upside, right? So Kenny Pickett, not saying he has the upside to to win you the Millie Maker, right? But the pricing could be good to where 5,200 Kenny Pickett is outscoring all these quarterbacks up here. You find value in other places. And yeah, you're, you're going to have guys that have great matchups, right? Um, just a first look and see if I can find anybody. Um, let's say DK Metcalf against Rams. I, I think that's a good matchup. 7,000 DK. And right, let's say the ownership is there. Let's say there is quite a bit of ownership on DK Metcalf. Like, you know you're going to have it. But his matchup is too good. Like, everything is too good. DK Metcalf, you know, you expect to be one of the highest scoring players. So, like, you could do that. But what you want to focus on when you're playing these tournaments is is finding people that aren't going to be owned. So, you're, you're not looking for the great matchups, right? You're looking for good matchups, sometimes bad matchups. That's the way to go. And the reason that is successful to some people that win these contests is, like, uh, there there was a guy that I saw that won three, and he had Aaron Rodgers, I think he said, all matchups. And granted, it's Aaron Rodgers, Hall of Fame quarterback and all that, but the matchups weren't always great. So, like, if you're looking at high-scoring, you know, uh, quarterbacks, let's say Kyler Murray was healthy and he was 5,800 here, that's a great example. Like, the pricing's there, so you save money. Not that you should always save money, right? You're eventually going to have to pay for a player. Um, but, like, Justin Herbert, right? Another good example to where there's quarterbacks much higher than him. Let's say his matchup is bad, which I don't think it is, but um, his matchup is bad or, or not favorable. Let's say that, not favorable. And the ownership's not there. So let's say under 10%. Uh, and ownership's always going to be lower in tournaments than it is 50-50 in double ups. It just always is. Um, and that's because the, the people that do this... Uh, let's say professionally, I don't know if you could count this as a profession, um, but put some time and research uh, and do this every weekend, right? Uh, they will have those quarterbacks that have low ownership. Why? Because if they have a good game, they have a, a, a huge advantage over everybody else. Rather than trying to play all the guys with good matchups and stuff like that, they're going to take some shots on some guys with some rougher matchups and if they if they do good, guess what? They beat you know a lot of other players. If they lose, you know what? That's why they have some of those lineups. That's why they have some exposure to some of those quarterbacks, so that it can not totally ruin them. Because if you're doing 150 lines, you're not gonna want to have high ownership in almost anybody, right? You're gonna have some ownership in players. But you can limit yourself, and you should limit yourself, so that if one player who is a stud, a lock, a, a guaranteed play, has a bad game, gets hurt, which we see so much in DFS, no matter what sport it is, it is the most painful thing to experience in DFS is have a player get injured, right? Because there's there's nothing you could do about it. You know, there, there wasn't anything you did wrong necessarily. If a player has a bad game, they have a bad game. You can't totally count that against yourself either. But if someone gets hurt, there's nothing you could do. You, and you can't sub them in. You can't do anything like that. So an injury can happen. So don't invest too much in a one player because one player can kill 50% of your lines. If you have 50% exposure to a, a player and they get hurt and they don't score you any points, that will destroy your lines. Now, don't get me wrong. If, if we're talking about high exposure and we're down here in the wide receiver where we get 3K and Lynn Bowden Jr. at 3,000, you know, uh, is high ownership. Everyone on the Saints, Thomas, uh, Shahid, Alave are all hurt. Lynn Bowden's look good, right? And and his exposure, and you get 50% of him, like 50% of your lines is going to have a player with low points. Granted, this guy is is would be a value if he were to have a good matchup and stuff like that. Um, I'm just using this in a, as an example. He's a name that I found and just I, I knew who the player was. So um, it, it's not the best strategy to have high ownership on players, right? Oh, I, I recommend don't ever having anything over 50, right? I, I think the sweet spot of where you kind of want to be is about 20 to 25 percent. 
uh, when you start getting over 25%, you start to get the 30, the 40. Just know if that player isn't having a top performance, right? The value isn't one of the top values. You're killing a lot of your lineups right there. So just make sure to, to watch your ownership when doing your lines. Uh, the other thing is defenses. Uh, now this one, like if you're doing double ups and stuff like that, I mentioned just always paying down, right? It, it's not worth taking the risk of paying 4,000 for Baltimore against Houston. And they have a really good matchup, right? A rookie quarterback offense doesn't look good. And Houston decides they're going to have their good game against Baltimore and you paid up. You know, I like Tampa's defense. So you paid 1800 more for a defense. And let's say Tampa's defense outscores you. So that's... Uh, on 50-50s, double ups, I don't recommend it. When you're playing tournaments, though, yes, it's recommended. It's recommended to get different exposure to defenses, right? And this is any defense, right? So on a good day, you know, let's say you get 24 plus teams you should probably have even the slightest, right? So Houston against Baltimore, you should have the slightest, a 1%, one, a one, percent, one lineup of the Texans' defense, right? You should have exposure to every defense because defenses is unpredicted. You cannot predict a defense, right? You can say, like, everything favors this defense, right? The starting quarterback's out, top receiver's out, there's some injuries on the offensive line. Backups can get in. Remember what happened with uh, Stidham in Vegas last year. Everyone thought that when Stidham was in, there's a good chance that Vegas offense isn't going to score. Their defense was bad. It's going to be a blowout, right? What happened? He put some points up on the board. So anything could happen. Have exposure to all defenses. I, it, it's recommended. Now, I'm not saying go crazy on defenses or anything like that. Obviously, when you're playing tournaments, for, for me, I'm looking at the defenses that are playing very bad offenses, offenses that haven't, uh, you know, scored, like their red zone percentage is really bad. Like, they could get down the field, sure, as long as they don't give up points, right? Uh, that's what I'm looking at. That is what I'm looking for in my defenses. So, I don't care what the price is on defenses. I can have a 5000 salary defense. It doesn't matter. I can find value in other places. But if a defense scores 20-plus points, and, you know, every other defense is 10 and under, that's a huge advantage in a tournament, right? 50-50 double ups, like I said, it, it's not as impactful, uh, but on tournaments, it's definitely impactful. So that's just another tip, another thing to look at when uh, going through a tournament and a 50-50 and double up. So um, that, that, like, that is pretty much just a, a small advice that I could give you. So it's, you know, Get an optimizer, you know, whether it be paying for one or find a free one, or if you're very smart, uh, making one. Um, but two, you know, if you want to try to get into it and just see where you're at, like you might totally be off, right? Like you like players, you have a good feeling and everything goes bad, right? Don't lose a lot of money. Go on FanDuel, try out FanDuel's. You're not going to get the same pricing. FanDuel and DraftKings have different pricing for a reason, right? To to attract different customers. There there might be a weekend where I play more FanDuel than I do DraftKings. And there's going to be a weekend I play DraftKings more than FanDuel because there's pricing, pricing that allows me to have certain lineups on one site versus the other. So don't limit yourself there, right? But try out FanDuel's 5 cent. 150 lineup. It's awesome. I love it. I wish DraftKings would get it because I would play DraftKings too. $15 at least a week would be dedicated to those two contests. I don't care if I only win $1.25 uh, a, a day. It, it's practice. It's getting better at this. It's learning uh, how players have ownership, you know, finding value, stuff like that. So it's a huge recommendation. Um, two, don't have or number three, don't have high exposure to players, right? You don't want to have anything. My recommendation is over 25%, right? If you start hitting uh, 40 to 50, you're putting yourself in a really bad spot. So I recommend just staying at 25% for ownership, 25 and under, right? And the last thing is defenses is have exposure to every defense. Even if it's one line, 
have exposure to every defense, right? Um, I, I don't think it's ever a bad strategy to have every defense, right? Because you can have a game where it's a high scoring game. And guess what? Those lines with those defenses, you know, not going to be good. But the lines that have these defenses, right, at different price points, you're allowed to spend different amount of money, right? Like a 1900 between Baltimore and uh, Houston is, that's where you find value. That's 1900 to more positions that you can spend up on, right? Especially early in the season, some of these prices are all over the the, the place. So Bijan is 8K. Um, keep going down. You know, Kendra Miller down here, 43. Sean Tucker there. Roshan Johnson, 45. Um, Chase Brown, 47. Zach Charbonnet, 48. A-Chain, 49. Spears, 49. So, like... The pricing is going to be a little shaky at first, but once you get towards the end of the season, DraftKings probably has their pricing right where they should be. Obviously, they're not always going to be accurate because DraftKings, first thing, like those prices are out. So if injuries happen, you you have that advantage. But just know a lot of people have that same thing. So uh, just look out for rookies. Look out for early pricing in the season. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys did find this video helpful. If you did, please leave a like, uh, and just subscribe. I'm trying, I'm making it my goal this season to push out as much content I can for you guys. Um, I will have DFS videos every week. Once the season starts guaranteed, I will have videos. What kind of videos I'll make a schedule. I'll, uh, exit, I guess, uh, and have that posted for you guys. So you know what to expect. I can't have the same content my work schedule doesn't allow it so i will do what i can for videos and any other video ideas that you guys have that you guys want to see please feel free to comment otherwise i'm just going to try to post what i think uh would be helpful information to you guys so thank you guys and i'll see you in the next one